Hello, this is a specimen of the heart and we're looking at the left ventricle which has been opened. This is the aorta, this is the aortic valve which is very abnormal and over here is the region where the mitral valve leaflets are where they allow blood inflow from the left atrium into the left ventricle. On the opposite surface we can see the left atrium and the right atrium and this is the right ventricle. The main pathology is seen in the aortic valve and to better appreciate this, let's compare this with that of a normal heart. On this left side, we have a relatively normal heart, again with the aorta and the aortic valve and on the right is the specimen that we are looking at now. So if you look at the aortic valve in the relatively normal heart, we can see that the cusps are actually quite delicate. Uh, they can be quite translucent and also uh, they are not fused to each other. When you compare this to this abnormal valve, we can see here that the cusps are not only thickened and fibrotic and deformed or distorted, they are also fused to each other. So in this instance, you can imagine or extrapolate that this patient would be suffering from abnormal function of the aortic valve. And in this instance, the valve is probably not able to close or even to open fully. So in this instance, there will probably be both a combination of aortic stenosis and possibly aortic regurgitation as well. In this particular view, we are not able to really see uh, the orifice of the mitral valve, but we can appreciate that in this region, which is the region of the chordae tendinae, they are also abnormal. Here, where the chordae tendinae should usually be very delicate, in some areas we can see that they are actually fused to each other. And let's compare them with the chordae tendinae in the relatively normal mitral valve. You can see that the chordae tendinae are actually quite delicate and they are composed of individual strands as opposed to here where some of them are actually fused with each other. Hence, this is an example of mitral stenosis as well and this is a result of rheumatic heart disease. So in rheumatic heart disease, there is an acute phase where there is damage to the endocardium, often also the myocardium and even the pericardium. In the endocardium, there can be damage to the valves and this eventually results in fibrosis, thickening and sometimes fusion of the cusps of the valve and also the chordae tendinae as we see here. And this of course results in functional abnormalities. So um, rheumatic heart disease often affects the valves of the left heart, particularly the mitral valve and also sometimes the aortic valve. In the instance of aortic stenosis and regurgitation, there can be hypertrophy of the left ventricle and eventually giving rise to congestive heart failure. A brief description of the pathophysiology of rheumatic heart disease can be found in another video in this same cardiovascular playlist. If you are accessing this video through the PathWeb Teacher channel in YouTube, you can just look for the cardiovascular system uh, playlist and this is the specific clip you want to look for, rheumatic heart disease, aortic and mitral stenosis. If you are accessing this through PathWeb, the online virtual pathology museum, you can go to the cardiovascular system chapter and scroll down until you find this particular specimen, rheumatic heart disease, and you will find a video on this page uh, briefly describing the pathophysiology as well as the microscopic features of rheumatic heart disease. Thank you.